Hello, fellow space scholars. I wanted to thank you for being here. This channel started four years ago for many reasons. One of them is that I love to teach and have always wanted to learn how to create video lessons. Another was my frustration at the lack of facts in space news. I wanted to make sure that those truly interested in space science had somewhere to go to learn about the equations that make rockets possible, to give you the tools to make your own evaluations of different launch systems. But as important as understanding the equations are, they limit my channel to those with a serious interest in understanding space science. As many of you know, the YouTube algorithm promotes broad topics that are easy to understand. Our space science lessons, however, require a more detailed understanding, and I don't want to dumb the lessons down. But that makes the target audience a lot smaller. To take this channel to the next level will require that I invest more time and resources, and that will require your help. Therefore, I really need your support via Patreon or YouTube membership. Just a little bit every month can make a huge difference, and would be greatly appreciated. I thank you so much, dear friends of Rocket Technology, for your continued support, and I can't tell you how much it means to me. Thank you, and stay safe. Ad Astra Proterra. All of my life, I have dreamed of the future. But not just any one future. Several possible futures. These futures first came from 1950s and 1960s Hollywood, with mad scientists unleashing terrible monsters onto the world because science can be scary, I guess. And the opposite vision, with humanity united and exploring the universe in fantastic ships, because science can also be our salvation. Science has saved the lives of hundreds of millions of people throughout history, but it has also given us the tools to finally end all humanity permanently. Atomic power held great promise that was never realized. If we had dedicated half as much of our resources to nuclear power as we did nuclear weapons over the last half century, global warming would not be a problem, and humanity would have colonies on the moon and Mars by now. We made the wrong choice back then. Will we make the wrong choice now? With all of our evolutionary cousins vanquished, what is the greatest threat to humanity today? And what is our only hope for salvation? The answer is the same for both. In order for a large mass of humanity to survive in relative comfort with dignity and resources, Robotics and artificial intelligence will be needed. Science fiction has always been a unique genre of literature, belittled by many in the literary world, but more prescient than any government prognostication. While Star Trek in 2001 predicted many technological innovations, the darker visions had their place also. Orwell's 1984 warned us of the surveillance state, which is now possible at a level that even Orwell could not imagine. Blade Runner taught us how narrow our definitions of humanity and rights can be. But the Terminator is most related to today's discussion. This movie showed us a dark future brought about not by the uncontrolled emotions of humankind, but by the purely logical conclusions of technological minds that we had created to protect us from those very emotions. We like to think that we are the pinnacle of evolution and that our needs are the most important. It is unlikely that the universe will operate with these same presumptions. One of the main tropes of science fiction for almost a century was the dream of mechanical men with electronic minds. These would serve us as we were the masters of the creation any parent will tell you that children rarely maintain this reverence past about age seven. In the city of Hyannis, Massachusetts, a very troubled man named Justin Morea was holding his mother at knife point. He had already fired a rifle at police and was barricaded in his home. 
Police say the man at the center of a day-long standoff, hours on the Cape, shot at officers all throughout the standoff and was known to police. Ben, it has been a long day for law enforcement and the people in this neighborhood. In the last half an hour or so, uh, we heard in the distance over a megaphone negotiators trying to uh, convince the person in the home to come out, calling him Justin, saying, we don't want you to get hurt. We can straighten all this out. It's no big deal. Uh, but so far, we have not gotten any word about whether the standoff has come to an end. Take a look at video from throughout the day. Police with long guns and tactical gear are spreading out in this normally quiet Cape neighborhood. Barnstable police telling us they responded around 7.30 this morning to a home on St. Francis Circle for a man holding another person at knife point. This is usually a no-win situation for police. They either wait, hoping the attacker does not kill the hostage, or they go in in force, risking the death of the hostage in the crossfire and almost certainly killing the assailant. But today, these officers had another option thanks to the robotic engineers at Boston Dynamics. While we don't yet have RoboCop, we do have RoboDog. One of these, named Roscoe, of course, entered and searched the house, opening doors and allowing two other robots, less agile tracked machines for bomb disposal, to help scan the home. The assailant was located in a bedroom, and he ran, knocking Roscoe over in the process. While this would have disabled one of the tracked robots, Roscoe got back up and went after him. The suspect heard the noise behind him and fired his rifle at Roscoe with an immediate loss of communications. He then started to shoot at one of the other two robots. But this distraction gave the police time to pump in tear gas safely, eventually getting the suspect to surrender with no deaths. This seems like a complete victory, and it is, with Roscoe sent to Boston Dynamics where he will be made as good as new. But many of you might remember the Black Mirror series and the episode where robots like these tracked and hunted human beings. Can we pass laws that allow only the peaceful use of this technology? Of course not. Both scenarios are inevitable. And general artificial intelligence is coming, if it's not here already. Neural nets, organic or digital, are pattern-recognizing learning systems. And many of these already exceed human skills in metrics that most thought unassailable just a short while ago. I am always amused when learned colleagues tell me what technology will never be able to do. I usually paraphrase Arthur C. Clarke, the mind behind the 2001 Space Odyssey, by saying that when a distinguished but elderly scientist states that something is possible, they are almost certainly right. But when they state that something is impossible, they are very probably wrong. AGI is coming. And with blindingly fast artificial minds designing the hardware and software for even more brilliant blindingly fast artificial minds, it is coming now. How long will it be before one nation parachutes thousands of AI-equipped robots into enemy territory with orders to take out anyone in uniform or carrying a weapon? A matter of just a few years, almost certainly. Our only hope is to have our defenders online before they come for us. A sobering thought. Let us know what you think. And stay safe at Astro Proterra.